The Allen Cognitive Levels screen is based on Allen Cognitive Levels, which is a scale that includes levels from 0 to 6 that identify different cognitive abilities. The assessment is unusual in that it uses the task of sewing stitches to evaluate cognition. The idea behind this is that each task requires a progressively more complicated level of understanding to complete. The ACLS test asks you to perform a series of sewing tasks using a flat leather string that has a light side and a darker side, a large blunt needle, and a larger piece of rectangular shaped leather with pre-made holes around the outside edges. This is what the leather looks like when set up for the assessment, and this is what an assessment may look like. Hello Dan, I'm Dominique and I'm your occupational therapist today. How are you? Good. Have you ever been to occupational therapy before? I have. Okay, great. Well, today in occupational therapy, we're going to be working on a leather lacing activity. It's similar to sewing. Have you ever done anything like this before? No, I have not. Okay. The first task of the ACLS is performing a stitch called the running stitch, which loops through each hole in an alternating pattern. The goal is to make three running stitches in a row without skipping any holes. Completion of this stitch represents intact abilities of fastening buttons and other tasks related to dressing and basic self-care. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is I have three stitches on this leather lace and we're going to complete, I'm going to have you complete all three. I have demonstrations right here of all three stitches, but we're going to go through each one, one by one. Okay. This is the first stitch. It's called the running stitch. I'm interested in seeing how you follow directions and concentrate. I will show you how to do a stitch now, so watch what I do carefully. Take the needle and push it down through the next hole and pull the thread through the hole. Push the needle up through the next hole and then pull the needle through the hole and tighten it. Don't skip any holes. Now you do it. I want you to see I want you to go through three loops just like that. Okay. Because this is a standardized assessment, there is a script the administrator must follow. Deviations from this script, such as periodic verbal cues and encouragement, are acceptable but must be documented. Like that. Perfect. Cool. That's great. Now we can move on to the next stitch. This is called the whip stitch. Do you see how the leather piece right here has one shiny side on the brown side and then one dull side that's like black or gray? Yes. Okay. Well, we always want to keep the smooth shiny side up that's visible around or between the holes. Now I will show you another stitch. Watch me carefully. Take the lace and bring it around to the front. Over the edge of the leather, push the needle through and pull tight. Okay. Now I want you to do the same thing. Push the needle through and pull tight and make sure that the leather isn't twisted. Don't skip any holes. Now you do three stitches. The whip stitch. This type loops over the outside edge of the leather card and back into the next hole. The goal is to maintain this stitch without twisting the leather or interrupting the overall pattern. Due to the increased complexity, completion of the stitch represents intact abilities related to medication management or meal preparation. Okay, I'm now going to make a mistake and see if you can correct it. One error that is shown to the client to problem solve is the cross and back error. The needle backtracks and crosses through behind the last stitch and forms a cross which interrupts the pattern. The goal is to recognize the error and then take action to correct the stitch. Do you see the mistake? I think so, yeah. Okay, let's see if you can correct it. Is that right? Perfect, that is right, you fixed it. Now I'm going to make another mistake and I want to see if you can correct it. Another error that is shown to the client is the twisting error, in which the leather lace is twisted within the whip stitch. The goal is to recognize the error and correct the twists. Do you see the error? 
Yes. Okay. Can you fix it? Yes, I can fix that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now we are on to the last stitch. This is called the Cordovan stitch. And this is what it looks like. Oh, no. The last task is the Cordova stitch, and this is the most complex task of the three stitches. The client will be asked to make this stitch once, and if that stitch is successful, the client will be asked to create the stitch three more times. Can you do this stitch? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, why don't you try and figure it out? Okay. Try as best as you can. The goal is to execute these multi-step instructions. Due to the utmost complexity, completion of this stitch represents adequate processing skills required to drive a car and care for others. Is that almost it? It is. It has just one error. Okay. Let's see if I can figure out what that is. This way? Or is that what I just did? That's what I just did. <laughs> this is tricky. It is tricky. Would you like a demonstration? I would, thank you, yes. There is no set time limit for this assessment because it is important to give the client enough time to try to work through challenging stitches in order to observe independent problem solving abilities. Unlike the first two tasks, this stitch challenges the individual to engage in self-directed problem solving to figure out and complete the stitch before a verbal cue or demonstration are offered. Deciding when to offer verbal cues or demonstrations requires careful observation of what the person is recognizing and attending to in this problem solving process. Verbal cues are provided when requested or when it appears to be needed. A demonstration can also be provided, but only two times. If the individual does not appear to initiate or tolerate this process, even with encouragement, continue to do the first demonstration. Uh, I, I don't, I can't figure it out. Would you like a demonstration? I can show you. Okay, yeah, sure. Watch me carefully. Bring the needle around to the front of the leather and push it through the hole. Pull it just tight enough so that the leather is straight, is straight and it, there aren't any kinks in it. Then you'll take the needle and push it through the top of the hole, pulling it to the left side or keeping the loop on the left hand side of the leather piece. And then you want to pull through as tight as you can. Do you see okay. what I did there? Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm now you do it three times. Three times? Yes. Uh, okay. Just try uh. your best. Scoring of the ACLS is based on the ability to complete the task given. The more difficult the stitch and the task that is currently completed, the higher the score. Scores are broken down into numbers that correspond with specific levels of supervision and care that are likely to be needed to function in daily life. Scores range from a low of 3.0 to a high of 5.8. A score of 5.8 means that in general, you are able to function quite well independently in your own home. A score of less than 5.8 indicates that you will likely need or benefit from some type of assistance in daily living tasks. All right, Dan, well, thank you for doing this leather lacing activity with me today. Based on the results, we're gonna pick out an activity that you might be interested in completing while you're here in occupational therapy. Sound okay to you? Sounds good, thank you. Great, I'll see you next time. All right, bye. Bye. Based on the client's score and their current abilities, an activity can be chosen from the Allen Diagnostic Module as part of the treatment plan. In Dan's case, he would benefit from a magazine rack woodworking activity to address multiprocessing skills. Building activities are commonly known to be fulfilling to the individual while working on regaining abilities. Good. <laughs>